So let's take a closer look here at Azure Bastion. And this is an intermediate uh, uh, hardened instance that allows you to connect to your target server via SSH or RDP. And it will provision a web-based RDP client or SSH terminal. I'm going to tell you, honestly, I never really thought of this use case for Bastions uh, prior to this. Uh, but the reason uh, like Bastions are good or have still a utility these days is because some people are using a Google Chromebook. And they're not going to have uh, a terminal, so they can't use SSH. Or if they're on Windows, they can't install the PuTTY client. Or if they're on Windows, they, can't, uh, they, they won't have the, um, the remote desktop client. And so the only way is through the web, because a Google Chromebooks all a browser. And so this is one of those utilities for a Bastion. Now, Bastions don't necessarily are, are just for this use case. Uh, they're definitely a very good and secure way to connect to your virtual machines and having uh, a way of auditing who has access to what. Uh, but this is the use case that Azure is putting forward with Bastion here. And so the idea is that when you want to create a Bastion, you're going to have to add it to a subnet uh, in your VNet or you're going to have to make a new subnet, and it has to be called Azure Bastion subnet. And it has to have at least a size of uh, forward slash 27, so 32 addresses. So that's what you're going to have to do. So um, you'll just have to go in and add in that subnet there. And then once you do, uh, you can go ahead and launch your Bastion. So let's first take a look at RDP. Uh, and so RDP, uh, we saw how to uh, do it, but let's see what it looks like with, with Azure Bastion. So what you do is you'd say connect with Azure Bastion for your Windows machine. That's gonna assume that you want RDP. You're gonna just put in your username and password as you normally would, and boom, you're in your machine. That's all it takes. Let's take a look at how you do it with SSH. So, um, you know, if you're using a Linux server, it's gonna obviously wanna use SSH because you don't have RDP for that. Um, and so uh, you can actually use either the SSH private key or the, the username and password. Uh, I recommend using always SSH private key. But let's take a look at that process. So uh, you'll enter your username in, and then you can switch over to SSH private key. And then uh, the .pem file, which is downloaded locally to your machine, uh, which is your private key, you can just uh, uh, select it, and then that will upload it and use it in the comparison, and boom, you're in your machine. So. Uh, that's just kind of a cool service that they have there.